In this video, I will share with you my story of how I discovered I have a PFO. I will let you know what that is, and I will share my journey towards spiritual heart healing. So this one could get a little vulnerable for me. If you want to find out more, stick around. Hi and welcome or welcome back to this channel. My name is Dr. Lindsay Marie. I'm a Christian comedian missionary doctor sharing a message of hope, health, and wellness for the mind, body, and soul. If you don't want to miss any future videos, make sure you hit the subscribe button and don't forget to stay till the end of the video for a word of encouragement. All right, so I wanted to start off this video with a short story time of telling you guys my story of how I discovered I have a PFO. This story starts when I was in my third year of medical school, which was in 2011, almost nine years ago already. After two years in the books in the cadaver lab, you're finally in your clinical rotations in medical school. And it can be kind of a stressful time in medical school because now you're not only doing book work, but you're also doing a lot of work in the hospital. Now, I'm a person that never really had anxiety before I went to medical school, but once I was in medical school, during rotations when you're having to perform and show your best to the professors and the attending doctors, you can tend to get a little bit of anxiety. So it was during my internal medicine rotation where you're rounding on patients in the hospital and having to present their cases to the doctor that I noticed my heart rate would be pretty fast during those times. And at first I thought it was just a little bit of anxiety, no big deal. But then after a while, my heart rate was still pretty high. Eventually I realized that I not only had a higher heart rate while on rounds, but I also had a higher resting heart rate, which would be anywhere from 100 to 120. Now a normal resting heart rate is anywhere from 60 to 100 beats per minute. So anything above that would be considered tachycardia or elevated resting heart rate. Since I was in medical school at the time, I felt my hypochondriac tendencies taking over me and I felt the need to diagnose myself. So I diagnosed myself with POTS syndrome, otherwise known as postural orthostatic tachycardia syndrome. It's a type of tachycardia or elevated heart rate that gets worse with standing but improves when you're sitting or laying down. But after a few weeks to months go by with me having this elevated heart rate, I start to realize that it's not really going away and maybe it's time to go get it checked out by a real doctor instead of just diagnosing myself as a medical student. So after setting up an appointment with my primary care doctor, they wanted to do a test on me called an EKG, which looks at the electrical activity of your heart. And to my surprise and her surprise, I did have some variations showing up on my EKG. I had what's called a right bundle branch block or RBBB, which shows up as having a widened QRS on the EKG. On physical exam, she also noted that I had a split S2 when listening to my heart. A regular heart rhythm sounds like lub dub, lub dub. But my heart rhythm with having a split S2 sounded more like lub dub dub, lub dub dub. Oh great, so what does all this mean? Well, having a right bundle branch block means there is some sort of blocked electrical activity between the two heart ventricles. The causes can include a pulmonary embolism, chronic lung disease, cardiomyopathy, heart attack, heart failure, infection of the heart tissue or valves, or it can be due to age-related changes to the heart. Other risk factors for having a right bundle branch block could include having an atrial septal defect or high blood pressure. Being a young person in my 20s, I didn't think I had any of these things, or at least I hoped I didn't have any of these things, but the only way to find out for sure or do some more workup was to send me to a cardiologist. So the doctor sends me to a cardiologist, and in that visit I had to get another EKG. And I remember being in the room, and after the tech finished the EKG, he gave me the printout to look at before the cardiologist came in the room. And on that EKG, at the bottom of the printout, it read diffuse ST elevations, which could be a sign of heart attack or something known as acute pericarditis. So at that point, I'm starting to freak out thinking, oh my gosh, did I have a heart attack? Do I have acute pericarditis? 
What is it? I can't remember. What's the treatment of it? Is it surgery? I don't know. Acute pericarditis is an inflammation of the pericardium, which is the tissue that surrounds the heart. It usually causes chest pains, and the treatments include pain medications, anti-inflammatory medications, or sometimes even surgical procedures, including a pericardiocentesis, which is a procedure to drain the fluid around the heart, or a pericardiectomy, which is a procedure to remove the tissue around the heart. Why? I didn't want to have surgery. My heart rate is really elevated at this point. It must be over 130 by now. And then finally, the cardiologist walks in. So in a panic, I hand him the EKG and say, look, it says I have acute pericarditis. And he looks at it and he's like, but you don't. And I'm like, what do you mean I don't? So he goes on to explain that an EKG can print out an automatic assessment of what's going on, but it's up to the cardiologist to confirm that assessment. Thankfully, he confirmed to me that I wasn't having a heart attack or experiencing acute pericarditis, but he did say that he would like to have a further study of my heart, which would be a heart echo and something called a bubble study. A heart echo is basically taking a picture of the heart by ultrasound and a bubble study is something that they use to look at the blood flow of the heart to make sure it's going in the proper direction. And the way they do that is they have a solution of saline mixed with air to create the bubbles that they will inject into your vein. They then can see the solution of air or bubbles passing through the heart to see if it is passing through properly. So what they are looking for with this study is to see if there are any defects between the chambers of the heart. Finally, at the conclusion of this study for me, they did find out and diagnose me with a PFO, otherwise known as a patent for Raymond O'Valley. And in non-medical terms, this just means that you have a hole in your heart. Now there are a few different types of holes that you can have in your heart, but there are two that I would like to go over today, and they specifically affect the atrial septum, which is the wall between the upper chambers of your heart. These include what we talked about, a PFO and an ASD. An ASD is a failure of the septal tissues from between the atria and is considered a congenital heart defect, something that you are born with it is usually a larger hole than a PFO. In contrast, a PFO occurs after birth. It's when the foramen ovale fails to close. The foramen ovale is a hole between the left and right atrium of the heart that every fetus has, but it usually closes on its own after birth. The purpose of the foramen ovale is to allow blood to bypass the fetal lungs while the fetus is in the womb. In the majority of infants after birth, this tiny hole does close up once the baby starts breathing on its own. However, for whatever reason, this process doesn't always occur normally and one in four, or as high as 25% of the population has a PFO. Many of the people in the population who do have a PFO don't have any symptoms, so they may not know that they have it. According to the American Heart Association, the vast majority of people who have a PFO require no treatment. Some people who have it may experience frequent or severe migraines, so in that case you could have treatment. And probably the most important thing to note for anyone who has a PFO, unfortunately you are at a higher risk of stroke. And the reason is because in our day-to-day -day lives sometimes our blood does tend to form tiny blood clots. Normally these blood clots don't harm anything, but with having a hole in your heart, it has a chance to pass through to the other side and lead up into your brain, causing a stroke. There are studies that show the majority of patients who do have a stroke before the age of 55 have been noted to have a PFO. It definitely depends on the size of your PFO, so you would wanna to talk to your cardiologist about if treatment is right for you. These treatments can include taking a blood thinner such as aspirin on a daily basis, or if it's more severe, you could take a blood thinner called warfarin. And for more severe cases, or if you are having more severe symptoms related to your PFO, the last resort would be a catheter procedure or a surgical procedure to close the hole in your heart. 
Luckily for me, my PFO was a very small size and actually it was only open during a Valsalva maneuver, which is basically just bearing down anytime I cough or sneeze that could very slightly open the hole in my heart. So there were no major treatments that I needed to start right away and I decided just to monitor it with my cardiologist as needed. The tachycardia or elevated heart rate I was experiencing was most likely related to my anxiety in med school. And with more time in medical school and throughout residency, I had learned better ways to cope with the stressors of being a doctor, so that helped lower my anxieties, which helped lower my heart rate. So that's my story of how I discovered I have a PFO or a hole in my heart. What I really wanted to speak on today was not only the importance of having a healthy heart physically, but also having a healthy heart spiritually. The Bible says in Jeremiah 17, 9 that the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately sick. Who can understand it? So on this channel, I've been fairly open with you guys about sharing my testimony in part one and part two. The first part I went over in the video on my homeless experience and the second part of my testimony I went over in my dance music video. So if you haven't had a chance to watch either of those, feel free to do so. But in this video, even though I had gone through those experiences and was able to share that part of my testimony, there was still a part of my heart that wasn't fully healed yet. As I have mentioned in other videos, there are some things we can go through in life that lead to a lot of hurt and unforgiveness. It can lead to certain diseases of the heart that include selfishness, greed, anger, wrong motives, jealousy, pride, which is a big one, idols before God, unforgiveness, gossip, envy, or covetousness. Sometimes these sins can invade our lives and our hearts if we are not careful to guard our hearts. Proverbs 4.23 states, Keep your heart with all vigilance, for from it flows the springs of life. And this is so true. Whatever is deep down in our hearts over time tends to spill out into our lives. In Proverbs 23, 7 states, As a man thinks in his heart, so does he become. And for out of the abundance of the heart, his mouth speaks. Luke 6, 45. Our hearts are also very closely related to our soul and can be affected by our mind, will, and emotions just as the soul is. So in my own personal experiences in my life dealing with certain grief and unforgiveness due to my past experiences, I was starting to notice more and more that certain thoughts and emotions I was having weren't aligned with the Word of God. And once I realized this in my own life, I was compelled to ask God for help. And this led me to say a simple yet sincere prayer, which was, God, I need heart surgery. And within the next day and even the next week, God began to heal my heart at the root. And the root of unforgiveness or even grief can be bitterness. Let no root of bitterness spring up within you. Hebrews 12, 15. So I'm here once again to share with someone who may be watching this video that God is faithful and he's near to the brokenhearted. There is a promise in Ezekiel 36, 26, which says, And I will give you a new heart and a new spirit I will put within you and I will remove the heart of stone from your flesh and give you a heart of flesh. And the reason I like to share so much scripture with you all is because I want you to know that no matter what you may be facing or dealing with in this life, God addresses it for you in the Bible and there is so much insight and encouragement that you can receive from the word. So to tie everything together, in this video we discussed how I found out I have a hole in my heart, no, I didn't physically have heart surgery, but over time with the condition that my heart was in spiritually, I asked for heart surgery and I received it. I may still have a tiny hole in my heart physically, but spiritually my heart is now made whole and brand new. I'm so grateful to God for the continued work and healing he is doing in my heart and I know that he can do the same for you. After all, he is the great physician. All right, that's all I have for today's video. I hope that it gave you some information on some cardiology topics or physical heart healing as well as spiritual heart healing. Feel free to like or share this video. There will be links to other videos at the end as well as in the description box. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you on the next video. Until next time, bye.